Hi, this video we will be talking about server-side web programming for the web information systems class. In the previous videos, you have learned about HTML, CSS, JavaScript as the client-side programming languages, programming language. Uh, but in this lecture, you will need some background in one of these languages, that is Java, Perl, Python or PHP. I'll touch upon Java and PHP in this video and then hopefully if we have some time talk about Python in the class. Before we delve into the programming languages, first let us learn some basics about web servers. Web servers are programs that delivers web content. As shown in the figure, the web server receives a request, accesses its static files from the file system and sends the response. For example, if you type a URL on your browser, as shown in this figure, the browser sends a request to the server that runs a web server program. The web server responds to the request with appropriate HTML and CSS files. These files are displayed on the browser. So, since we now know what web servers do, I will give you some details on the history of it. In 1990, Tim Berners-Lee wrote two programs. One was the browser and the other one was the web server. He named the web server as CERN HTTPD, since the web server which he developed was at CERN. However, lately, Apache as, the web, as a web server has become really popular and around 60% of the web servers running are Apache. It is an open source web server and can run an OS such as Linux, Windows and Mac. The next popular one is IIS, which is developed by Microsoft. It's called Internet Information Service. It's specifically for Windows. There are other web servers too. In this in this class, we will mostly focus on Apache. We will be using Apache as the web server. <clears throat> to download Apache, you can use LAMP, WAMP, MAMP. LAMP is Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP. WAMP is for Windows and MAMP is for, MAMP is for Mac. However, if you use these packages, you'll have Apache, MySQL and PHP installed. If you want to just install Apache, you, you can go to its website and you'll have the download page which is actually mentioned below. So I just mentioned that web server delivers static web pages. However, we see a lot of dynamic information on the web, such as the weather reports popping up or date and time changes on the websites or the information you actually update on websites show up immediately for example uh, one of the prominent ones you know is uh, the facebook news feed or the friends likes and comments as soon as this these things happen in real time what i mean by real time is as soon as your friends update something it will show up on your news feed or the likes and comments uh, and uh, another example is uh, the information you update on Amazon to register. Once you register and once you update, you'll have your own ID and all your information is shown up on the uh, on the Amazon website where on your account website on Amazon. So these are dynamic web pages. So what what this does is, uh, if you send a request to the web server, it runs a script to either access add delete or modify the database and then response with the appropriate data as uh, as a response however we need to note that the request sends some data for the web server to uh, to handle so that it runs a script with that data and then sends the sends the appropriate response based on the request uh, one of the examples is exactly the same email address if you are sorry Amazon uh, uh, Amazon 
registration account where you put up your email address and you have already registered so what the web what the website does is sends your email address as a as a part of the data to the web server and the web server would actually check if it is already existing and if it is already existing it will just respond with some values where your website shows that that particular email address is already existing so what what the web server did here is it ran a script which accessed the database and uh, checked whether the email address was already there so <clears throat> the main reason for uh, people to come up with the server-side programming was to access the database there was some data which was probably changing or you pro or people wanted to add or delete and hence they came up with server-side programming <clears throat> so the first thing what we need to do from the browser end uh, would be to actually send a request with appropriate data so data has to be sent to the server how can we do this in the last in the previous videos in client side programming you have learnt about javascript ajax which uh, receives json or xml and uh, the other way is to use html forms so there are two methods which we can use which are called http methods which i'll get into very soon <clears throat> but uh, since you have already learned about javascript i'll i'll just touch upon very briefly about html forms to just give examples on how we can actually send a request to a server so first the http methods and there are two things one is uh, there are two methods one is the get get method and the other is the post method the difference between get and post method is that in the get method data is encoded in the URL whereas in the post method data goes with the body. An example is shown on the slide where the parameters are sent in the URL. You can see the http.noss.org, uh, the page name and uh, the question mark parameter name and its value. So you can send X number of parameters and there is a limit for the get data but for post uh, there is no limit so post is frequently used to change the state for example by adding deleting the data on the server database whereas get is used for I item put in data just re just retrieving the data so when you uh, when you use those kind of get requests which is item put in then you every time you send a particular URL you would be getting the same response back whereas when you use post with adding and deleting you might get different responses so let's see how can we actually call these get and post methods through HTML forms so HTML forms are done ba basically to pass data to the server via text fields checkbox radio button submit button etc more features can you can for for more features of html forms just to get onto this website and you'll have you'll have a lot of information this is a very basic example of html form where we call the method post using the destination url the input type is a button with with the value submit or it's the submit button so now we know that from the front end is specifically html forms you can actually call post or get method uh, with a particular destination url and in the previous videos you have also looked at how javascript can be used to do to perform similar functionalities of calling a server side script so from now we look at what are the technologies at the server side which is the most prominent part of this video so although i'll be talking mostly about servlets in php i'll give a very brief overview of cgi2 uh, for servlets you need to know java and php it's an abbreviation for hypertext preprocessor let's start with cgi uh, i'm just getting on to I'm just giving a brief overview of CGI because CGI was the first server side uh, it was the interface for to run scripts on server side this was the first uh, first interface which people came up with 
<clears throat> rather this is the first server side technology which was started in 1993 but it was formally defined in 1997 cgi is an interface which can call uh, python or perl scripts on the server side for generating the response however the main drawback of uh, cgi is that it has very limited functionality and it has it has scalability issues because it it spawns a new process for every requ uh, every request from the client side so java mm, uh, java's technology uh, came up with something called servlets which was the answer to cgi so it just ext extended a uh, java class which is a servlet class and you can actually implement uh, two basic functionalities which is the get and post accordingly so most of the data is uh, handled with two objects uh, which is http servlet request and response objects which i'll show in the in the in the next slide uh, but uh, you it it can actually provide you with all the advantages of java and it uh, it needs a servlet container what is a servlet container here servlet container will be a component of the web server where as soon as you send a request to the web server it goes through servlet container and it checks which servlets it needs to call hence it manages the life cycle of the servlet and it maps the url to appropriate servlets it also manages the security concurrency and deployment uh, features uh, which are necessary to have a uh, handle the whole servlets so some of the uh, servlet containers are apache tomcat which is also based on apache and it is uh, it's an open source uh, software and uh, there is jboss which is also open source and ibm have their own servlet container which is called ibm websphere uh again in this work we will be focusing or we will be using just apache tomcat so you can find the urls for installation and download here one is that uh, it just downloads uh, just tomcat and the other one you can you can use tomcat on eclipse eclipse is an id if you have no information about eclipse it's preferable for you to know about it if you are actually using java either eclipse or netbeans so as you can see now this is a very simple java program which uh, extends the http servlet class and it just prints uh, hello world uh, uh, it just prints hello world or it just responds with the string hello world so uh, the at web servlet is actually the url after um, uh, after the server after the server uh, url it's just the servlet which can be called so as i mentioned uh at web servlet gives the uh, url relative to the app name uh, if http noses.org is your uh, 8080 is your server with the port 8080 then slash hello will be the uh, will be the url to call the appropriate servlet and do get is the function which actually implements the get request and do post implements the post requests http servlet request and http servlet response are two objects which contain all the data which has to be which is sent to the server and sent from the server uh, the request contains the data from the client and response con contains the data to the server sorry to the client so now let's see uh, we'll take we'll take the example to the next step and Let's see how to generate a simple HTML uh, file from the using servlets. Uh, so it's it's pretty simple. As I mentioned uh, in this particular program, we uh, we are again implementing do get. Uh, the URL is uh, test one uh, relative to the main URL uh, to the server URL, and then. A response dot set content type is text slash html that means we are actually trying to send html file it's a, a html content to the client and uh, the response object is what we are trying to uh, <clears throat> fill in uh, with the html content via the 
here there are no request parameters there are no parameters or there are no values being sent by the client it's just that if the client calls the server name slash test one an HTML file is sent back to the client hmm. we can modify the parameters and values to a particular servlet if there are any default ones and we can modify the URLs using web.xml this is kind of a little older version but in the new version of Tomcat uh, uh, or in the new version of uh, yeah servlets we can actually use all the URLs directly as, as at web servlet which I mentioned a couple of slides back <clears throat> uh so that's uh that's servlets for you so to recap uh, we mainly need a servlet container which is tomcat you need to make sure that uh, you need to understand how do get and do post methods are implemented you need to know how to call that from the front end either using javascript or uh, html forms so these are the things which we have learned until now now let's get into php uh, PHP, uh, although the coding is different, the calls and the calls from the client side will be very similar to what what we saw with servlets. So PHP is an abbreviation for the hypertext pre hypertext preprocessor, and uh, is also a very popular server side language. Uh, we need to note that it is also a dynamically typed language. So we can actually embed PHP script into an HTML file uh, whenever you call that HTML file uh, it runs the PHP script inside it and it generates the data so that uh, the data is dynamically populated at the server side and sent to the client side so you can have an extension with .php and uh, that's that's also present in Apache web server. Embedding the PHP in HTML is done by using one of these four limiters, uh, delimiters. I've just shown a simple hello world example of PHP where uh, you can echo hello world and whenever this particular file is called, uh, the first thing what it does is to execute this particular this small script of PHP and echo hello world right there and then send the HTML to the client. So, excuse me. There have been a wide range of applications similar to C uh, CGI, for example, having uh, handling forms and uh, trying to provide dynamic information to the client. So, PHP also have a lot of libraries like network connectivity, database connectivity, XML, XSLT manipulation, and image manipulation. So you can do a wide range of uh, uh, programming or wide range of features using PHP by, by utilizing these libraries. So getting back to uh, how, how we can receive information from the client, um, in Java, we showed that HTTP servlet request had all the information. There is an example even here where we say that request.get parameters name, where the name is uh, actually an ID of the of the parameter, and if you use this particular statement, you get the value of that ID. Similarly, in PHP, you can use one of these HTTP post vars if you are actually calling a function using post method HTTP get vars if you are calling calling a get method which which is which was changed in PHP 4.0.1 not not changed where there was another additional feature added where you can directly use dollar underscore post or dollar underscore get so to exactly call uh, you get the value of the ID name you can use one of the two things which is shown shown on the slides Let's take another uh, step and look at another uh, look at another example where we can generate uh, even numbers up to a particular number given by value given by the client, and then provide that uh, that HTML page. So this is the example where underscore get max is. Uh, the value provided by the client with the parameter name max 
so the maximum uh, the maximum will get that value and for from zero until we reach the maximum we print all the even numbers on the HTML page before we send this HTML page back to the client this uh, slide gives us a very neat comparison between Java and PHP although there are more features being added to PHP as and when it is getting popular Java is uh, more uh, you know it's it's very popular and uh, it's a compiled language so it's pretty uh, it's pretty fast once things are done whereas php is an interpreter language uh, <clears throat> so yeah you can go through the uh, comparisons and let me know if you have any questions in the class these are the set of uh, references which I have used to come up with these slides and you can get more information about PHP and servlets. Let's see if we can touch upon some Python as a server-side language uh, in, in the class and uh, uh, make sure uh, you, you install Apache, Tomcat and try to get something running uh, before we start the class. And uh, thank you.